What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video I'm gonna tell you guys how to get your first job after coding bootcamp. If you guys are new to the channel and you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me just stay motivated to keep making these videos for you guys. And in this one, I just wanted to respond to a lot of people who've been sending me messages and are basically worried about getting a job when they finish coding bootcamp, which is totally natural. Like I have been there. So I wanted to share with you guys some tips that I learned from my coding bootcamp, from my career counselors on the job search um, that I think really helped me stay focused, understand what my goals were, and also to track my measurables and really see how well the job search was going. These tips are gonna help you guys do all those things. All right, you ready? You sure? All right, let's do it. So the first thing is make a list of the companies that you wanna work for. And I think that one was really, really crucial because so many people, even just not software developers, but in general, a lot of people are just looking for whatever or whoever is hiring. It's like, hey, I don't know what I want. I just want a job and money. So you are going to be more in demand now that you have that skill than you were probably prior to having that skill. So you can dream a little bit more. You can actually say, you know, I want to work from home. I want to make this amount of money. I want to, you know, and these are all things that you can seriously consider in your very first job. It's not unrealistic. So I say that to say that you really have to have your goals in mind. Like is work life balance important to you? Is working from home important to you? Is learning and growth important to you? Or is just simply working in tech important to you, no matter what type of position it is. So. When you think about those goals and what you want in your job and not just who's willing to hire you, I think your options start to look much better because now you're like, okay, well, I don't want to work for them. Like they're hiring, but I don't want to work for them. It just doesn't sound like my right type of place, my right type of fit. It's not the type of culture that I want. So if you're not looking for a really big company, you can easily start to eliminate certain places that are hiring. So you can narrow down your job search and say, you know, these are the 10 companies that I really ideally would like to work for. I'm going to put all my energy and effort into making my application for these companies the best that I can. So the second thing is once you have that list of the companies that you want to work for, make sure that you do research on those companies as well to really be sure that they are, or at least presenting themselves to be a really good fit for what you're looking for. So that means going on the website, it means reading the about section, that means reading the team and find out who the executives are, and maybe even reading some like outside articles about the company and just getting perspectives from like reviews and you know competi market competition and just kind of see where they are in their industry and if it's a type of place based on what other people are saying who work there and the reviews, like does everything add up? So yeah, so basically just make sure that, you know, you use all your resources or as many resources as you can to make sure you get the most clear picture of who this company is, what they represent, and if that is what you're looking for. The third thing you want to do is hop on LinkedIn or continue to search the web and find HR contacts at that company. Every company usually has like a team page or a contact us page or a about us page where you can go get information about who's on the staff or who's on the team or what departments they have or maybe you can even find like a directory but there's a number of ways that you know in the 21st century nowadays you can get people's content information like i'm not saying that to be weird i mean obviously be respectful be courteous be professional there's ways to create e-connections e-relationships virtual relationships whatever you want to call them but the same way that you would network and meet people in real life there's ways to do it professionally over the internet as well and sometimes that could be following up you know on a correspondence if somebody adds you as a linkedin connection Maybe you send them a message and say, hey, I appreciate you accepting my connection or my request. You know, I recently applied for this position and I love this, this and that about the company. Uh, if there's anything I can do or any, if you have any questions, if the, you know, you can reach me here on my, my, you know, whatever. Like just, you know, tailor that to yourself, who you are as a person, obviously. But there's so many ways you can create e-connections online with people who can 
essentially see some sort of human side of you outside of just your application and your resume and your cover letter and things like that it gives them some sort of sense of your integrity who you are as a person <laughs> they're filtering through hundreds and thousands of applications every day so you know just something as simple as sending someone an email a thank you note a linkedin connection with a follow-up those simple simple things can go a long way in terms of making you stand out making people remember you and also giving them a piece of who you are as a human being your integrity your character so you know finding or building some sort of e-connections or just you know relationships connections with people who actually work at that company that you want to work at that's on your list i think is another way to just exponentially increase the odds of you following up and being able to get hired the fourth thing we're not gonna spend a lot of time on it it's apply that's pretty obvious the fifth thing is again follow up with a personal message to those people that you had as contacts so you know if you can get a, a few people you know that might be in hr just in case some people don't reach back out to you or whatever you don't want to seem spammy obviously but just give yourselves the best odds of getting to the right person so if you're not sure if a few people are the right person in hr maybe you reach out with to the first person and just say hey just wanted to you know i just applied uh for this position and i just wanted to reach out to someone in hr and just introduce myself and say how excited i am to be considered to work at this company um you know just wanted to see am i speaking to the right person in hr to discuss blase and blase or to you know whatever however you take it from there but you know give yourself a few options there's always a way to find people that work at these companies and again a human connection goes a really really long way for example in my very first job i actually met the person who hired me at my demo day so he had come to the demo day with an hr person and they were going from table to table looking at each group's final projects and looking at the code and asking questions and basically assessing the developers on the spot if they could speak to the code if they were confused if they understood certain things if they could answer certain questions about the application itself if they could articulate what the application does if they could articulate what they did in the group so if you could do all those things you had a really great chance of meeting someone and making that personal connection in person that we're talking about that could really carry over to you know a word of mouth referral from that person to someone in hr who gives you a call and brings you in for the interview or however things end up playing out your connections to human beings are so powerful in getting you that first job as a developer because again you haven't been doing this for very long and you gotta remember even when you finish boot camp you don't really know anything all right so in the world of developers and to senior developers and software development like you're very new you're still a baby so there's a lot to go and you want to give yourself as many advantages as you possibly can so whether it's e connections or it's you know interpersonal connections relationships in real life i think having a list of companies that you want to work for doing research on those companies building a list of contacts and relationships with people that work at those companies applying for the job and then following up with those contacts that you had is the absolute recipe to making sure that you can track how much progress you've had so you know as you're applying and everything you can keep track of which companies have called you back or contacted you back or haven't said anything and you can kind of see how well your resume is working from when you apply and you don't hear back or you might tweak it and change some things and start noticing that you hear back a lot more so it's a way to kind of a b test and see how well your resume is working for you um and yeah i hope this will really just help you guys get in there and take advantage of some of the simple simple things that people just don't do because coding boot camp is so hard and it's so hard to you know come home after like eight or nine hours of coding and then get on the job hunt and start applying for jobs and doing more research and doing this and doing that but it is what it is guys that's the grind that's coding boot camp um and I just wanted to share some of the tips with you guys that can really help you get through that. All right. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, make sure you guys leave me a like, share, and subscribe. Like I said, it helps me stay motivated to keep making these videos for you guys. Leave me any comments down in the comment section down below if you have any questions. And finally, if you guys are brand new to coding or you're going to a coding bootcamp or thinking about going to a coding bootcamp, check out the description box down below for my free intro to coding bootcamp course, where I pretty much teach everything that I wish I knew going into my coding bootcamp but it's completely free. It doesn't cost anything but your email address. So make sure you guys check that out. 
Lastly, there's also my free private Facebook group. The link is also in the description down below. And basically, all the resources for all the free things and study materials, learning materials, all that stuff that I don't share in my description box on all the videos, I put in that free Facebook group. So make sure you guys go over there and get added with all the other people who are over there taking advantage of all the free resources and learning. Again, guys, this is Darian with Darian the Dev, and I'll see you guys next video, all right? Peace.